All right, so you're considering making a move to the Tampa Bay area, or maybe you're thinking about investing in the area, but you're wondering what the pros and cons could possibly be. And I gotta tell you, I make this video every year, and in the last year, there has been more change than any other time. So make sure you stick around to find out what those changes are. My name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed realtor and I'm a team leader here at the True Living Group. And we help people just like you move, relocate, or invest from all over the country. We make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. And we're taking calls, phone calls, text messages, emails. I'm getting DMs on Instagram. However you got to get hold of us when it comes to making that move or relocating, or if you've just got questions about the area, please feel free to reach out. My contact information is listed down below. Um, you can also put a comment. Just know that I respond personally to each one of those comments. My assistant or some kind of bot is not out there doing that for you. But if just know that if you've got any questions or if you'd really like to consider making that move and you just want to talk about it, please feel free to reach out. We've got your back. All right, so we're gonna get in this year's list of pros and cons, and, and I gotta tell you, a lot of things have changed, and I, I don't think it's any news flash or news bulletin to anyone that the real estate market is, is crazy out there, but that's not where we're gonna spend a majority of our time, y'all, and we're actually not even gonna start there. We're gonna start with the main reason why I believe people end up in Tampa or are attracted to Tampa, and it's the same reason that me and my family decided to relocate three years ago as well. You know, We looked at a bunch of of different coastal regions in the, the Florida, um, I'm sorry, in Florida specifically, you know, we looked at Jacksonville, we looked at Daytona, we looked at um, Port St. Lucie, Stewart, Jensen Beach area. We never really considered Miami or uh, West Palm Beach. That just wasn't our vibe. Um, you know, it's totally personal, but that wasn't our thing. You know, we're from the Midwest. We're a little bit more laid back. We were trying to find that kind of lifestyle. We we entertained Orlando for about a half second <laughs> um, because to us, we just couldn't imagine moving to Florida and living in the swamp, like in the middle of the state. We were coming down because we're water babies. We love the ocean. We love outdoor activities. And we really wanted to be someplace that offered that type of lifestyle. My wife gave me only a couple rules. She said, I need to be within 15 minutes of the water and we gotta have a pool. If you can make that happen, you can move me away from my family. So we were able to do that. We were relocated from Detroit and we have not looked back. Um, and I think that that is one of the main reasons why people love to come to Florida is the lifestyle. And the thing that I wanna kinda to impose or, or share with you guys is the fact that it is a very laid back lifestyle. You know, when I showed up here, my real estate agent who I used, um, because I wasn't selling real estate here yet, you know, he had Nikes on and, and, and a polo shirt. And, you know, when I went down to the beach and, you know, these guys are selling luxury listings, they're wearing flip flops and Tommy Bahama. And, you know, while that's not my style, what I found was that that is the, the mentality, right? It's a flip flop lifestyle here. And you can go all up and down the the beach and the dress code is basically you know they're wearing bathing suits or um, uh, beach attire you know and and that's how they roll every day and man we just fell in love with that idea of you know I won't say you're always on vacation but Tampa Bay area and especially the Gulf Coast to me gives that vibe it is very you know, if I had to say, you know, there's a lot of Canadians and Midwestern Midwesterners who have been coming here for years, and I know more, uh, more recently we're getting people from the Northeast, right? But it's that kind of laid back lifestyle that is very attractive. And, and we were coming down here with the idea that we'd be able to work from the beach, you know, and, and that doesn't really happen as much as I'd like it to, but we do have that ability. And the fact that you can come down and people are friendly, people care, they keep the place clean, they care about what's going on in the communities, and, and they really appreciate the fact that we have this beautiful weather and this beautiful environment that, that feeds us, and, and you can feel it, right? The life is a little bit slower, um, there's less hectic things that push people, and for the most part, people are generally nice. 
okay? You can find a jerk anywhere, and I know somebody's going to make a comment, but, you, <laughs> you know, the reality is there are a lot of really good people who have come here with the idea of taking it easy, and I love that. So the number one pro on the list is absolutely is going to be lifestyle. Okay, number two pro on our list today is the outdoors, and I alluded to this a little bit, but man, if you are somebody who is active, First of all, Florida has a ton to offer, but the Tampa Bay area to me is just world class, y'all. And for those of you that don't know, we live closer to the to the Gulf um, Coast. Um, we are in Pinellas County, which is about 35 minutes uh, west. Um, of Tampa Bay, so our Tampa specifically, which is in Hillsborough County. So if you look at Tampa, you see the bay there, and then you see the little peninsula on the other side, that's Pinellas County. And then to the north, you have Pasco County, where you have Wesley Chapel, Lando Lakes, Holiday, uh, Newport Ritchie. Um, that makes up the greater Tampa Bay area, which is about 3.2 million people, just so you guys know, and it's growing more and more every day. We had 50,000 new people move to the, to, the, uh, to the area last year, which is staggering. That's a huge number. And um, we're expected to have another huge growth he year here as well. Um, but that outdoor living is incredible. You know, in, in Pinellas County, where I live, we've got the Pinellas Trail, which is a, a groomed uh, bike path and, and uh, walking and, and running path that goes from the very top of the, um, the county all the way into downtown St. Petersburg. I believe it's like 29 or 35 miles. Don't quote me on that. My father-in-law comes down and rides it all the time. He loves it. Um, the kids just did a 16 mile ride with him yesterday. They absolutely love it. And, um, it's where we have Florida Hills. And when I say that, I mean the overpasses cause Florida's pretty flat y'all in case you didn't know. Um, there are some areas that offer those types of outdoor activities. There is an old phosphate mine that they've turned into, um, which apparently is like world-class, uh, mountain biking trails. And that's in the Riverview Brandon area, which is going to be east of the city. Um, the Fishhawk region, uh, Lithia, you can check that on a map. You, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show it in the map so you guys can check it out. But world-class, you know, mountain biking, which you would not expect when you think Florida. Obviously, we've got paddle boarding. We've got sport fishing. We've got fishing. You can go kite surfing. Um, you can go skimboarding. You can go down to the beaches. There's so many things that you can do here in Florida. Obviously, with 260 plus days of sunshine in the Tampa Bay area, you are going to take advantage of all of that beautiful sunshine and get outdoors. This is a a runner's paradise, walker's paradise. I mean, I go take the dog for a walk slash run every morning and my neighborhood is filled with people moving around and it's like that every day, 365. I absolutely love that. So the outdoors is definitely pro number two for us. All right. So number three, when we talk about pros is the cost of living. And um, I know recently this has become a hot topic because everything is rising, right? Inflation seems to be out of control. Uh, housing prices, grocery prices, everyday things that you need seem to just be rapidly increasing in price, and they are. But the thing I want to kind of keep in frame of reference here is for a coastal community, having access to an ocean, or the, the Gulf of Mexico in our case, um, Tampa specifically is still extremely undervalued nationally. Okay. And I, I know there are people that live here that are really upset about pricing and how much things have changed in the last three years, but they're like that everywhere. Y'all I got, you know, I got to share that with you. Um, you know, our families from Detroit, they've had a 20% increase in real estate prices too. This is not abnormal for anyone right now. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but it's the reality and we got to deal with it. But the cost of living for where we live in Tampa Bay is actually very, very cost effective versus other areas. And, and I'm just going to give you guys some pricing here. I've got I've got a little pricing in, that I pulled aside. You know, Miami currently the the average median sales price of a home is four hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars. In Naples, Florida, it's five hundred and six thousand dollars. And here in Tampa, it's three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. Right. So we are we are over a hundred thousand dollars less than Miami and one hundred and fifty thousand less than Naples. And those are two very popular areas in the state. So just to give you some perspective, that is extremely inexpensive, especially if you start looking at coastal areas like the Northeast. We're talking about uh, Boston, Jersey Shore, Martha's Vineyard. If you go out west, we all know what's going on. West prices, you know, if you live in Los Angeles or anywhere around there, you know, a, a 800 square foot bungalow could cost you 1.3 million dollars. It's crazy, y'all. And our average sales price, I mean, I, I run the numbers every single week. Um, yesterday was 413 thousand, um, and I gave you the Tampa City proper number. But if you look at the Greater Tampa Bay area, just specifically, our average sales price is 413 thousand dollars at the time of this recording. So nationally speaking 
banking and even in the state of Florida, we are a value, y'all. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're making, if you're considering making that move because Tampa is predicted to be the number one real estate market in the country this year. How that shakes out is to be seen, but there's a lot of drivers behind that. You know, um, our jobs growth was second only to Salt Lake City in the entire country in 2021. Um, and again, I think real estate is extremely undervalued still because we live in the water, y'all. The thing that you got to kind of wrap your mind around is Tampa Bay is a bay. It's on the Gulf Coast. And for essentially, Florida is in the ocean to begin with. <laughs> so when you kind of wrap your mind around those things, you can see very quickly that like if you're investing or if you're thinking about relocating, it's a very good option for you. I would strongly encourage you if those things are on your radar to make Tampa a at least a look, okay? Because y'all, we've got some really cool things to share with you guys. Okay, so that leads me to number four on the list of pros, and that's our beaches. Our beaches, y'all, are world class, and I'm not going to, you know, sing the praises here for too long. I'm going to try to keep it short because I could do it forever. We moved here because of the beaches. My wife, my daughters, my son, we went to Indian Rocks Beach, which, you know, we've shared this with you guys before. That's our home beach. We went to Indian Rocks Beach, and man... It was so calm and laid back and the water was warm and it was smooth and the sun was setting and it's got all the things, all the feels that you're like, man, this is what I want this to be like. It's not busy. Um, we absolutely adore our beach and our beach is just one of many. There are so many beaches in Pinellas County specifically, again, which is west of Tampa Bay. Tampa is on the bay. You know, you can go to Saint, downtown St. Pete, sit on the pier, enjoy the bay. You can go downtown Tampa. You can get on the river walk. There's just so much beautiful space here regarding the beaches and the water. But talking about our beaches specifically, Clearwater Beach, which is in Pinellas County, which is right about 35 to 45 minutes west of, of downtown Tampa, just for perspective, um, is rated the number one beach in America and it usually is in a dog fight with St. Petersburg Beach or St. Pete Beach sorry um, to the south of us and that's the very south of the uh, Pinellas County Peninsula there <laughs> and you also have Madeira Beach which is this year was ranked in the top 10 I think it was ranked number nine an hour and a half south of us you got Siesta Key and that's with parking y'all and then you know up in the panhandle you got Destin Beach which all of these beaches are always fighting for number one we have two in, in the greater Tampa Bay area specifically, and if you drive an hour, you can get to, to um, you know, to uh, Siesta Key Beach, which also is ranked number one regularly. Our beaches are white, sandy, warm, and beautiful. The amount of sunshine we get, the, the ability to have water sports on the water out there. I mean, we have this huge gulf shelf that makes the water uh, shallow and keeps it warm for longer. Uh, warmer for longer, I should say, and also keeps the water fairly calm unless there's some pretty gnarly storms. The negative is if you're a surfer, you're not going to get a whole lot of love here. You got to go over to the East Coast and still our East Coast friends are always going to the West Coast to surf. And when I mean the West Coast, I mean like they're trying to go to Hawaii or California, right? So just for perspective, but all other water sports, I mean, the fact that you can take a pontoon out onto the Gulf of Mexico without fear of drowning is incredible. So it is, there is so many things. We've got a ton of little barrier islands, the inter intercoastal waterways. I mean, you can get a house on the water here and be out in the Gulf and you can take a 17 foot boat out there and feel comfortable to do it. it our beaches are just absolutely phenomenal. You got to come experience our beaches no matter, no matter what. All right, so that brings us to our weather, which is the number five pro on our list. Um, and our weather is phenomenal. You know, it is 260 days of sunshine. Like I said, uh, St. Petersburg is known as the Sunshine City, um, which does not hurt. I, I mean, it's just, it's so much sun and it's awesome, okay? Our high temperatures um, during the summer get up in the high 80s. Um, I, you will definitely see those low 90 stretches, you know, during August, uh, September, and a little bit in July. Um, that's also called the rainy season as well, but those high temperatures will stretch up there. But during the winter, I mean, you're talking about January, our average temperature is right around 69, 70 degrees. Our low temperatures are in the 50s during that time period, or they can get in the 40s, but our average low temperatures are, are in the mid 50s there um, overnight. And, you know, for November, from November to essentially May, 
it's windows open, air conditioner occasionally, and the sun is shining. There's very little humidity during that time period as well. There will be some days that sneak in, but for the most part, it is exactly why people come to Florida. It's why people retire to Florida. It's the reason why people want to be in Florida, because if you can be that type of weather near the ocean, it's absolutely incredible. So number five on my list is, abs is by far weather, no doubt. Okay, so Juan, you've given me all these great happy things on, on the pros list, but what are the cons? And y'all, I'm gonna share this with you, I'm gonna give you some context. Um, and we just finished number five as weather being a pro, but number one on the cons list also is weather. And I wanna share this with you guys because it's real life and you, and you know me, I try to share my heart with you guys and share my personal experiences with you. And this is what I'll say. Everything you've ever heard about Florida summers is absolutely true. <laughs> And I don't know what you heard, but it's probably true. And the best way I can uh, describe this to you is um, imagine waking up, and this is what a Gulf Coast summer is like, just so you know. Um, imagine waking up with a Labrador retriever three inches from your face, breathing right there. Can you picture that? That steamy, sticky breath? Yeah. That's basically what it feels like in July, August, and September in on the Gulf Coast of Florida here in Tampa Bay. It is hot, it's sticky, it's steamy, it's all the things that people say it, it is. Um, however, what, what I'll say is this, is it's not the end of the world. You do get used to it. Um, it's not my favorite part of Florida, for sure. That's why it's on the cons list, but I also would gladly, and have gladly, given up my four months four to five months of gray, gloomy, cold, freezing, raining, gray, <laughs> did I mention gray? <laughs> gray weather in Detroit in exchange for that three months of brutal heat. Um, and the reason being is because I can jump in a pool or change my shirt or take a shower um, and, and go about my day. And the dirty little secret is everybody else is sweating too, y'all, just so you know. But what I couldn't do is back home up north, I had to hide in the house all the time. And I like being outdoors. I mean, our wife, my wife and our family goes to the beach all the time. We go see sunsets all the time. We're trying to be outdoors. The kids ride the bike, I run. We're always trying to be outside. My gym is in my garage now, thank the Lord. And I open up the garage door and I can work out there 365 days a year. I don't have to close it up and turn the heat on or worry about you know my car breaking down on the side of the road or pack you know a blanket in the trunk in case something was to happen in my auto be automobile and you know my state flower in the springtime is no longer car parts where the snow is defrosting and the car parts are popping through on the side of the highway right like that doesn't happen anymore our streets are clean um you know the the weather is just incredible but we've got this pretty gnarly time period during that time period you've got hurricane season hurricane season runs from may to november um almost the same time period that the humidity runs and i've said this before but like Imagine um, God walks over and flips a switch in May and says, okay, it's now hot and humid in Florida. And basically that's what happens. And then in November, he walks back over and flips the switch again <laughs> and it stops. And I swear to you, this is what it feels like. And the strange thing to me was that, you know, when I came down, I knew it was going to be hot. I got it. I, I knew I was in what I was in for, right? But the thing I wasn't aware of um, was how there's no relief. And what I mean by that is, is this. Um, I walked out, I, I'm, I'm an early riser. I went out to go to the gym one morning at 5 a.m. and it was 83 degrees and there was water on my car and it had not rained. It was just humidity. It's always humid and always hot during the summer. You will get a little bit of reprieve, but it's just something to be mindful of. So like, you know, if you've got some physical ailments that, that kind of uh, hold you back from, from being around extreme heat, just know that Florida in the summer is gonna be tough unless you just live indoors all the time. So I just wanna share the truth with y'all. And the other thing I wanna remind you of is like our average water temperature in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, during that time period as well is like 83 or 85 degrees. So like you can be outside and walk into the water and and you don't it's not refreshing you like you just get this like wet feeling it's super weird now that's that's a very short window but I just I have to share the truth with you guys because it, the first time it happened I'm like wow that's strange but 
it only lasts a little bit of time and it's totally a good trade-off now the hurricanes are something else we have not had to experience those um, i'm very thankful for that um, and what i what i'll tell everybody about hurricanes you get like a seven to ten day advance notice on hurricanes it, they're not sneaking up on anybody okay and tampa has been very fortunate i mean there hasn't been any real direct hits on the city for over a hundred years um, there have been some hurricanes that have come across the state and definitely had some impact so i want to be mindful of that but there hasn't been anything that swung around and you know ran directly into Tampa so that's great news but yeah definitely con and a pro is weather for sure now number two on the list is red tide now red tide is an algae bloom that that occurs naturally um, in warm waters typically and it feeds off of nitrogen and you know we can get into a whole list of reasons why this is a problem currently and you know i don't want to get into the whole global warming thing or political things around it but we can i think we can all agree that the water temperatures have rised and the gulf of mexico lends itself to having warmer temperatures anyways because it's shallow for quite a bit a ways out right um, but the other thing is we're all you know think think of it this way we're all fertilizing our lawns to keep them green there has to be watershed that naturally runs off into the to the creeks rivers and then those end up in the gulf of mexico so you kind of get this thing where it can feed it now over the last couple of years the red tide has been pretty rough and last year especially was was i mean y'all it was terrible it had killed millions of pounds of fish they they literally take these barges out and start cleaning up the dead fish because it becomes overwhelming and it can be really hard on your respiratory system but what it really does is it just stops you going from the beach y'all we did not go from the beach last year from may uh, up until somewhere around the end of september because how bad red tide was last year and it's hard on the economy during that time period because you're not going to go want to sit down and have a burger or a sandwich or, or, or eat a uh, fish dinner while fish are you know washing up on the shore and i know this could be a little bit graphic but i'm just being real with y'all because this does happen it doesn't happen all the time but when it does you know, it just seems like everything else, it tends to be getting a little bit worse each time it happens. So it's definitely something to be mindful of. Um, but once the water starts to cool back down, it typically goes away and we don't have any issues. The other thing that can move it out of the way is if there's um, any large tropical storms, it can actually blow it out into the Gulf and it kind of breaks up and then does its thing from there. But red tide is definitely not a fun thing to deal with. And you know, I'm just telling you, it's not fun. So if you see that, um, be mindful of it because it can, like I said, it can mess with your, your breathing a little bit. It's hard on your respiratory system. So keep that in mind. Number three is one that's hitting way too close to home. And I mean that both literally and figuratively. It's traffic. Now, I've lived here for just over three years. And during that time period, our vehicles have been hit three times. And I don't mean that I've been in an accident. I mean that I've been hit three times. Now, having said that, my experience is not the same as everyone's el well, everyone else's, right? Um, I wasn't in a fender bender for over 25 years. I, I've, I've had very, very good luck in terms of that. Recently, that's been challenged. But here's why I think that this is an issue. And this is from my observational uh, data, so to speak. We have people that, that come here from all over the country and all over the world for tourism. We have people that move here from all over the country and there is different driving styles in different areas. And I don't mean principally, right? Stopping at a red light, um, don't going, don't go into oncoming traffic. Those are, you know, those are fundamental principles. We all understand that. But what is different is some of the, some, just some things about the regions, right? In Florida here, you can do a U-turn at almost every intersection. Where I lived in Detroit, that was uncommon. We had what was called a Michigan left and that they would just, you know, carve a left-hand turn lane in the median and that's where you'd make your turn but not at the light the lights here take a really long time which i think makes people anxious too but the big thing that we were talking about is just there's so many people from all over the place it is busy we you know i wouldn't say you were overly congested on the roads but our roads are busy especially during season when you know our tourism is up you also have a, a quite a few senior citizens on the road and i'm sure some of them are excellent drivers and there's also probably a a um a segment of that uh, of that demographic that doesn't need to be on the road anymore and you know teenagers are, are in that category too so i'm not trying to pick on anybody here i'm just being real right there's a reason why insurance is higher at both ends of the scale it's because they have more accidents that's real data not observational so i want to kind of keep that in perspective but for us this is what's happened we moved down in december of 18 in may of uh, 18 we were heading back home to see family in detroit 
it was a pretty rainy day rain kind of chilled out um and we were coming down the highway and everything came to a uh, you know a crashing halt so to speak uh we stopped in, in time we didn't hit anybody in front of us there was an accident about 50 yards ahead of where we got stopped um from the rain and i look up in my mirror and here comes this jeep behind me and i knew we were going to get hit kids were in the car wife was in the, we were in our truck at that point um and we did we got hit in the rear end pushed us in the car in front of us just enough to to do a little bit of damage to there so that was strike number one for us um, that's that same year in Christmas, I was parked at our local Starbucks. My, I back in the truck because it's long and it, you know, it doesn't really nose in real well. Um, and I'm sitting at Starbucks, minding my own business, doing some work on my computer. Um, and I look up and there's a, a truck smashed into my truck and from backing out. And I just shook my head. The door opens. Hey, does anybody have a silver F-250? And I'm like, yeah, that would be me. So that one got hit and it was this really nice old man um and his friend were in his pickup truck he wasn't even driving he was letting his friend drive and they backed up into the front of the truck it wasn't terrible but just enough to do enough damage to make it look ugly right great this past october we got a new vehicle <laughs> um we are in downtown st pete over the weekend with family who had flown in from detroit uh the grand prix was this past weekend and we were just hanging out and i heard a bunch of commotion we were the next block over from where we parked i didn't think anything of it it was a busy weekend st pete had people all over the place we come back and there's cop cars all over the place on the road cop cars by our truck um our, our expedition we have now and then cop cars 40 years 40 yards down the road and i'm like what is going on here i'm walking up and i start the car and, and my and kate looks at this uh this man that's parked next to us and she's like man what's going on out here he's like well you're involved in it and we both were like oh no so i walk around the back of the truck guys and man the whole plastic bumper side of, of the bottom of the truck part of the tailgate it's not good actually i'm going to post a video up here so you guys can check that out and it tore it up and apparently and this is what i got from the report there was somebody in a camaro really fancy nice black camaro i'm sure that was a very expensive vehicle they tried to pass the the trolley which is essentially a bus in the middle of the day in st pete on sunday there was tra i'm shocked that no one was hurt y'all i'm genuinely shocked because it was busy there was people everywhere everywhere and they they passed this this trolley on the on the left hand side which means they're probably doing 30 or 50 miles an hour or something like that and they hit the gas and the the back end got out from underneath them they swung back around clipped the side of our vehicle bounced off the curb went down the road another 20 or 30 yards totaled another vehicle totaled their vehicle and trashed another one behind that it was a mess y'all it was an absolute mess so I know I'm, I'm giving you a very dramatic story here and everyone in experience is not like this. So, you know, why I know this is a con, I just got to be real with you guys. Like I cannot, you know, give these videos and not tell you the truth. Okay. There are excellent drivers. I know not everybody's in that category, but we are having the worst luck. Um, we're starting, we're, we're turning Florida into a verb literally with our vehicles. Like that's happening to us and i don't know what else to do so number three on that list is definitely traffic hey guys if you've been getting any value from this please feel free to hit that subscribe button and click that bell also leave a comment if you've got any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them like i said before i answer them all personally not my assistant not some kind of automated bot we answer those questions directly so i just want to make sure you guys have confidence in that and that's going to lead us to our number four on the on the cons list here and that is going to be the bugs and pests and i've shared some of this with you before y'all but it, it, if you're not from the area and you know let's say you're coming from the west coast where you have very little interaction with bugs um you know when you get to the south there are lots of creepy crawly all kinds of things between the lizards and the spiders and we've got snakes and obviously there's alligators which i've never seen in my neighborhood in three years just so everybody knows um but the cockroaches which um you know they're so infamous the 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 state whoever is in charge of marketing or pr in the state did a great job because they don't call our cockroaches cockroaches here they call them palmetto bugs and as soon as you hear that, I'm just telling you right now, somebody is talking about cockroaches. <laughs> and those things are like this big and they fly, y'all. And they are terrifying. And um, during the rainy season, bugs tend to start trying to come in your house. So just keep that in mind. I strongly encourage anyone who's moving here, get a pest control person to come out. 
and um, come to the house regularly because we've got termites too, which can damage your home. A lot of our homes are made out of block, but we do have some older homes in the Tampa Bay area that were built in the early 1900s that were stick built, meaning that they were built traditionally with, you know, pieces of lumber as opposed to the block style home, which I live in here where they're made out of cinder block where they hold up really well against the weather. So that's why they went that direction. But, you know, termites will tear apart wood. So there's still a danger, even if you have a block home, because our roofs, right, are made of wood. The walls are made of wood. So it's definitely something we got to keep in mind. So getting yourself a pest person is awesome. Spraying for mosquitoes might be a great idea too. We, as a family, try to really lean away from the chemical stuff. We use a great company called sunday.com for our lawn. Um, they, they use organic treatments. It's just one of those things. My wife doesn't want our kids running around on pesticides. Um, you know, just making sure that we're taking care of our family as well. So, but it is something to keep in mind, y'all. The bugs and pests, you know, the um, the several different types of lizards, geckos are the ones that tend to come inside and try to go to the bathroom. They like wet environments, um, which is uh, not necessarily a good thing. I, we're not trying to hang out with geckos, but they also keep the bugs away. So you're like, you know, you're looking at these things like I'm not keeping a pet gecko in my house to get rid of any spiders, but. You know, just keep in mind the fire ants are the ones that I think that people need to be really aware of because you'll just be walking outside or you'll be in a park and if you don't have any shoes on, um, you can definitely step on a landmine, so to speak. And, and anybody who's ever stepped on a fire ant um, hill before, it's an awakening and not one that you really enjoy. <laughs> so definitely keep that in mind. Um, and and that, that can be a challenge for sure. So number four on that list is definitely bugs and pests. So keep that in mind. All right, now number five on the list of cons is actually housing. We're gonna get into this right now. And I know we talked about the cost of living to start as a pro, um, but it is becoming a con. And when I say that, I wanna put this in perspective again. If you're moving from an area like New Jersey where you have the highest property taxes in the entire country and you're paying somewhere between 10 and $15,000 on your, you know, on your, uh, your home there, um, then you're going to find Florida absolutely incredible. You know, from what I've read and my understanding is New Jersey, you know, some areas in New Jersey are 2% of the assessed value of your home. And for perspective here in Pinellas County, where I live, it's 0.9%, uh, 0.97%. It's 1% in Hillsborough County where Tampa is, and it's less than 1% in, in Pasco County. But think of it this way, it's half. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is like if I'll give you an example of Jersey or um, uh, New York City or uh, you know areas like San Diego, where the average house price right now is somewhere between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars. Well, I shared with you guys earlier that the the median sales price here in in Tampa Bay is four hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. That is half. That's half the cost. Um, so that is a huge advantage, you know? And the, one of the things that, that I didn't say when we were talking about the, um, the pros was that there's no state income tax here, which is incredible. There is no personal income tax. <laughs> like, think about that. If you make a hundred grand and you live in New York and you move here, you could be saving 10%. That's $10,000 a year. If you apply that to the, the average home price, which is $413,000, you get a mortgage on an average home, that's like five or six months of your mortgage paid. Wrap your mind around that, right? So when I say con on housing, the con is just from this frame of reference. If you've lived in the Tampa Bay area over the last three years, you've watched your property value skyrocket, which is an absolute blessing, but it also raises your taxes, which again, I think are very inexpensive. If I compare them to where we lived back home in Detroit, it's actually cheaper here. My uh, my utilities cost me less money here, um, and I don't have to pay a per personal income tax anymore. Ours was four and a quarter percent, so I got a four and a quarter percent raise just to move to Florida. So I wanna keep that in perspective, but in the last year, rental rates. This is where I wanted to get to. It's actually harder to get a rental right now than it is to buy a home in one of the hottest markets ever in the history of real estate. Um, and our rental rate increases were second only to Miami. We were 30%. We just finished just under 30% um, last year in terms of rental rate increases. Miami was like 31 or 32%. 
those numbers are staggering. And I know depending on what source you're looking at, they could be a little bit different, but just know it has been a huge increase. Um, and also property values. Again, that, that's a pro on one side and it can be a con on the other. So for people, you know, it, if you're a younger family and you were really hoping to buy, you know, a three bedroom, two bath, you know, somewhere, you know, near the water and you had a budget of $300,000, those days are becoming very difficult. Those houses are becoming very difficult to find because there are so many people who are moving from areas like New York, New Jersey, California, or other places in, in the country where, you know, real estate is twice or three times as much in terms of value and they can sell their home there move here and pay cash for it so what you might be perceiving as a um, I don't want to overpay situation someone else is looking at it going that is a absolute steal or a great value to me and I'm willing to pay more than the sellers asking and this is where we're at in this marketplace right now so just to give perspective there's always two sides to every stories right so like when things are going great for one person it can be a little bit harder for the other but in terms of if you're looking of, of moving you know relocating investing in the area here my personal opinion and my professional opinion is that Tampa still got a good three to five year run of what we're seeing today because people are recognizing that we are an absolute value from a coastal perspective and real estate is undervalued as a whole here, right? If the interest rates were six and a half percent, would I be saying that? I don't think so. Um, but at, you know, three and a half percent, they're undervalued. Our real estate is still inexpensive here. Again, coastally speaking, it's a steal. So if you have any questions about where, you know, the best areas to move to. Um, I'll give you guys some hints right now. So, you know, the, the phone calls I'm getting every day now are about areas like Wesley Chapel. They've got this huge seven acre uh, lagoon up there. It's called the Crystal Lagoon in Epperson up in Wesley Chapel. And I get calls about this <laughs> literally every day. Um, Lando Lakes is another area where people are growing. And then, then you've got like Apollo Beach and Ruskin down to the southeast of Tampa. Those are, um, those are areas that are up and coming, you know, established areas like Seminole. And of course, every thing on the Gulf Coast, people are always coming to Clearwater, Dunedin, um, Bel Air, Indian Rocks Beach, uh, St. Pete Beach. St. Pete is absolutely ha hitting a revitalization right now. The town is beautiful. People are investing in it. It's a gorgeous place to come live. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to hit me up in a comment below. Also, call, text, email. Uh, heck, you can even DM me, like I said before, whatever it takes when it comes to making that move, relocating, or just asking about the Tampa Bay area in general. Please feel free to reach out to me. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.